turn to politics instead. The Foreign Minister of Bangladesh, Dr. Deepu Moni, studied medicine and public health in her own country, the UK and the US, but politics was in her blood. Dr. Moni's father was a politician in Bangladesh, and that, of course, was formed from what was then East Pakistan in 1971. She's one of the best-known women leaders in South Asia. Dr. Deepu Moni, welcome to Rendezvous. And your country is now 40 years old, so congratulations. Thank you. It's kind of reached middle age. <laughs> <laughs> Something I think that we all have in common here. <laughs> and your fellow Hello. guest, Richard Dawkins. Hello. So, Deepu Moni, I mean, obviously you studied medicine. Um, you're sort of a person, a woman of science. But do you find any inherent contradiction in that and also being a practicing Muslim? I haven't uh, found any conflict in being a person of science. Uh, I studied medicine, um, public health and law, but uh, I, I did, don't see any conflicts between all these subjects and, and my religion. And I think um, uh, my faith is, is my personal thing and uh, I'm comfortable with it. And my religion also um, asks me uh, to ask questions, to understand the world, the universe. And in my very limited way, I try to do that. And I, so far, I haven't uh, found any conflict. And I'm, I'm happy with it. But you know, Bangladesh, obviously, um, almost predominantly Muslim country. A lot of people use how women are treated in Muslim mm -hmm. countries as a kind of barometer of how advanced a nation is. And what would you say to people when they look at Bangladesh and you see that you are a woman and foreign minister, Sheikh Hasina, the prime minister, is a woman, the leader of the opposition, Khalid Azir, is a woman, and then in Pakistan you obviously had the late Benazir Bhutto and so on. What is it about South Asia that allows women to assume these political roles. And yet, when you look at the population at large, women do really still suffer a great deal of discrimination. Well, um, in the, if I talk about Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, um, there, there are problems uh, with uh, women suffering, but it's not more than uh, anywhere else in the world. Um, but what we have is, because of the culture that I talked about, um, women are... Um, seen, whether it's within the domestic area or um, in, in the social areas or in, uh, within the state, uh, women are not seen as, mostly, not seen as second-class citizens. Women have a lot of opportunities, but we do have problems. Uh, we are, like any, anywhere else, we are trying to address those. Uh, but culturally, I think, uh, because in Buddhism, they say that um, men are carriers of knowledge, but women are carriers of wisdom. And <laughs> in Hinduism, all the great goddesses, I mean, <laughs> they are. And in Islam... So is there they, that mix of... Yeah, and in Islam, um, in Prophet's life, uh, women played a great role. And the first person to convert to Islam was a woman. The first martyr, the uh, Khadija, was that was the wife of the Prophet Muhammad. But, um, but so you see religion as a force for good on the whole. Uh, in our culture, Richard, in our in, in our culture. country, that has happened. Uh, and mothers are very important in our families, um, decision makers as well. See what? So Richard, um, you hear what uh, Deepu is saying there? That religion needn't necessarily be the destructive the whole basis for this it. the whole basis for the partition of the Indian subcontinent into India and the two halves of, of Pakistan was religion there was no other reason I mean Bangladesh is part of Bengal and mm -hmm. and your natural and natural neighbors would be West Bengal mm -hmm. yet because of religion you became part of Pakistan um, the in the partition of the Indian subcontinent purely over, over religion, there were the most hideous massacres. Um, you c couldn't possibly say that religion has been a, good f a force for good in the Indian subcontinent. As for the treatment of, of women, I'm delighted to hear that things are all right in Bangladesh, but they're <laughs> certainly not in West Pakistan, where, where women in are. In Pakistan. In mm -hmm. Pakistan, yes. Um, where um, the lot of women is, t is truly terrible in m many r respects. Well, in, in Bangladesh also we have problems, but it's not more than anywhere else in the world. I mean, um, we have uh, problems, uh, women facing problems, women facing mm. violence every day, uh, even in the developed countries. I mean, we talk about, whenever we talk about women's empowerment on a global uh, level, uh, we talk about Norway. Um, still, there are so many 
domestic violence cases in Norway itself. So, I mean, um, it's, it's a very difficult issue. Yeah. It's, it's at a personal level, at a societal level. Uh, so it's... Um, but we just okay. I want to. But when you talked mm. about um, partition of uh, India, actually, I believe that it uh, it's a misnomer. Uh, Bengal was partitioned, and Punjab was yeah. partitioned. Well, okay. So um, we're going to actually stay with the theme of um, strong women leaders because Deepamoni, I know you've just recently visited Burma, but I want to bring in our next guest because, of course, the Burmese pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi has very much been in the news these past 12 months, and of course, she has said that she's going to be standing for elections in Burma. And there's a new film about her life called The Lady.